30 minutes, number 1600, with the broadcast for today, 20 April 2019. This is our bulletin for Saturday. Because there isn't an ARL news for this week, today we bring the weekly bulletin of Australia's WIA. WIA is the oldest national amateur radio society in the world. You can also receive the text in a digital text form at the end of the broadcast, first in 8PSK1000 at 1500 Hz, and after that in PSKR63. Beware, because it is with 32 carriers at also at uh, 1500 Hz. Both do have a Reed Solomon switching code, so everything should work automatically. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet, streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hello there, I'm Graham VK4BB with the national news for week commencing April 21. It's the Easter edition and being Easter, I guess there's a lot of people away including maybe some of our directors. We've got probably the world's shortest WIA's director spot this week, but it is very important. It is also a reminder, so be listening shortly. Amateur radio in space pioneer, astronaut Owen Garriott, W5LFL, Silent Key. The ARRL reports the US astronaut who pioneered the use of amateur radio to make contacts from space, Owen K. Garriott, W5LFL died April 15 at his home in Huntsville, Alabama. He was 88. The ARRL news story reads, in part, Garriott's ham radio activity ushered in the formal establishment of amateur radio in space, first as SARX, the Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment, and later as ARIS, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. Owen Garriott was a good friend and an incredible astronaut. Fellow astronaut, the moonwalker Buzz Aldrin tweeted, I've a great sadness as I learn of his passing today. Godspeed, Owen. An Oklahoma native, Garriott, an electrical engineer, spent two months aboard the Skylab space station in 1973 and ten days aboard Space Lab 1 during a 1983 Space Shuttle Columbia mission. It was during the latter mission that Garriott thrilled radio amateurs around the world by making the first contacts from space. Thousands upon thousands of hams listened on 2 meter FM, hoping to hear him or to make a contact. Garriott ended up working stations around the globe, among them such notables as the late King Hussein, JY1 of Jordan, and the late US Senator Barry Goldwater, K7UGA. He also made the first CW contact from space. His son, Richard Garriott, W5KWQ was a private space traveller to the ISS, flown there by the Russian Federal Space Agency, and he also carried ham radio into space. Well, coming up, that special reminder from WIA, and also we've got the WIA AGM and conference happening very shortly. It's making news around the world. In fact, here's a story written by Amateur Radio Newsline, sent to us to record this week for use across the USA. There's a lot going on in Sydney, Saturday 25 of May, as the Wireless Institute of Australia's 2019 Annual General Meeting gets underway. This year, the event coincides with the centenary celebrations of the Waverley Amateur Radio Society, Australia's oldest continuously licensed amateur radio club. Early registration will bring great rewards. If you're lucky, if you register by midnight, Saturday the 11th of May, you'll be entered into a draw for an FDP DMR and analog radio that operates on the amateur bands as well as DMR land mobile and citizens band. The next day, Amateur Radio New South Wales will open its doors and welcome visitors at the Dural Complex, where a barbecue lunch will be served. Tours will be given, and the word in some circles is that Amateur Radio New South Wales' new tower will be up and running in time for that weekend. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Graham Kemp, VK4 Baker Baker. The WIA Merit Awards are presented each year at the WIA AGM. The board are keen to receive nominations for worthy recipients of these awards. Details of the awards on and how to make nominations are on the WIA website. Nominations are currently open and need to be submitted by the end of April. Good morning, everyone. This is Grant VK5 Golf Romeo once again on behalf of the Amateur Radio Experimenters Group. 
Over the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about a new event on the amateur radio calendar, designed to get people experimenting on air again. The Free DV QSO party is now only one week away, starting at 0300 UTC next Saturday. What is Free DV, you might ask? It's a homegrown digital mode created by David VK5DGR, designed for use on HF to transmit voice in less than one kilohertz of bandwidth. Its performance is good enough that the signal-to-noise ratios are nearly equivalent to SSB. Now, if you've never heard it before, here's a sample to let you know what to listen for. So, what is the FreeDV QSO party, you might say? Well, it's a gathering of people on air who like experimenting with FreeDV. You can collect points by working other FreeDV stations, which will qualify you for the FreeDV award presented by AREG. What's more, by getting on the air at the same time using FreeDV, it makes it easier for people to experiment with it. So look around the following frequencies next week to help find stations using FreeDV during the event. In particular, you can look on 1870 kHz, 3630 kHz, 7180 kHz, 14130 kHz, 21180 kHz, and 28330 kHz. During the QSO party, you can work each station once each three hours per band as well, earning points and multipliers along the way. If you want to know more, head on over to the AREG website, www.areg.org.au, where a full copy of the rules is available. There are also links on the website showing you where you can download the software from and which versions are available for Windows, Apple and Linux users. Don't forget, if you can use FT8 today, you can just as easily use FreeDV. Hope to see you all on air next week using FreeDV, so place the FreeDV QSO party in your calendar today. 73s from Grant, VK5GR. International news with thanks to IARU, RSGB, SARL, Southgate Amateur Radio Club, ARRL, RAC, NZART, Amateur Radio Newsline and the worldwide sources of the WIA. I'm Jason, VK2LAW. News from India. Ham radio to help during polls in West Bengal. Ham radio has been used at various polling booths over the years, but arguably not to this extent. The Deccan Herald reports in a unique initiative, the Election Commission and the Ministry of Communications have granted permission to the use of amateur radio for election-related communications. Amateur radio will be used in 31 areas across four Lok Sabha seats in West Bengal, where there is no mobile network coverage. The ham radio operators will be conveying poll-related information from the related polling booths to the concerned authorities on polling days. To Europe now, news out of Austria. Daniel Echo Alpha 4 Golf Papa Zulu slash Mike Zero Hotel X-Ray Mike has published an overview of the papers to be discussed at the IARU Region 1 meeting in Vienna next weekend on April 27th to the 28th. His post, which you can find on southgatearc.org, is an overview of proposals to be presented during this meeting. The proposals can be found in the conference documents. There are a total of 64 documents for the meeting, so a review of all of them, or an in-depth read, would be a huge work. In Sweden, Sweden's National Amateur Radio Society, the SSA, has set up a separate youth section led by Oliver, Sierra Alpha 50 Delta Juliet. The young people themselves have already taken the main responsibility for the business with their own budget and their own business plan. Through the establishment of a youth section, this becomes clearer and hopefully the business becomes even more visible. Currently, for this Easter weekend, the NOTA camp in Finnish Salo will have 13 Swedish young people participating. In August, the SSA will send three participants to the IARU Region 1 youth camps, youngsters on the air in Bulgaria. To Belgium now, station Foxtrot slash Oscar November 6 Juliet Uniform November Portable to commemorate 75th anniversary of D-Day. Belgium's UBA reports major commemorations are planned to commemorate the D-Day landing of the Allies on June 6, 1944. Rewinding back to the occasion of the 50-year commemoration in 1994, members of the UBA department's NNV and GBN started an annual expedition to Ranville on the historic Pegasus Bridge. 
Corporal Tappenden landed there with the paratroopers of the British 6th Airborne on the night of June 5th and 6th, 1944, near two bridges. Tappenden sent the historic ham and jam to England with his radio station WS38. This ham and jam code meant that the bridges were intact and in their possession. This was the start for the Normandy landing on June the 6th. The GBN and NNV departments donated a similar WS38 radio to the museum, with which Corporal Tappenden sent this message. The son of Corporal Tappenden sent the message back into the air with this radio station in 2004. This year, the expedition will continue with departure from Belgium on Friday the 31st of May and return on June the 7th. UBA members Xavier, Oscar November 4, Alpha Lima Yankee, Fernand, Oscar November 6, Uniform Foxtrot, and Hans, Oscar November 3, Hotel Bravo Bravo, are back and work together with RSGB sections that operate from the places where the ships left for the Normandy landings. To the United States of America, Hamvention has announced that it will open their gates to all without charge on the final day of the annual gathering in Xenia, Ohio. Hamvention 2019 General Chair Jack Gerbs, WB8SCT, said the idea is to encourage the curious to see what attracts some 30,000 visitors to Hamvention. We've decided to open the doors to Hamvention to the public on Sunday, May 19th without buying a ticket, Gerbs said. This will make it a little easier and cheaper for someone with just a little interest in Hamvention to see what the excitement is all about. And finally to Mexico, the 55th anniversary of IARU Region 2. On April 16, 1964, the first Pan American Amateur Radio Congress was inaugurated in Mexico City in order to create what is known today as IARU Region 2. Delegates from Argentina, Bermuda, Canada, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, Panama, Peru, the United States and Venezuela were present. IARU President Herbert Hoover Jr., Whiskey 6 Zulu Hotel, was very clear in his speech when stating the objectives of the new organisation. First establish the basis for a permanent organisation to promote the interests of radio amateurs in the Western Hemisphere. Second, get to know each other better, obtain a deeper perspective and strengthen international friendship ties. He encouraged present societies to participate actively with their regulators to get the votes needed in the coming World Radio Conference, where it's imperative to defend the bans allocated to we radio amateurs. For WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA Amateur Radio News Service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Ham Radio Operational News. It's a contact sport. I'm Felix, VK4FUQ. All major Australian contest rules and results are on the contest section of the WIA website. 2019. Next Saturday is International Marconi Day and Haddock will be operating VK2 IMD, the only IMD station in Australasia. This is because the first direct radio message from the UK to Australia sent by Marconi station in North West Wales was received at Warunga. Listen for VK2 IMD on a range of HF bands from 10am Eastern Time Saturday until 10am the next morning. For WIA National News, this is Julian, VK2YJS and AG6LE. 20th Harangel Memorial Sprint, May 4. IARU HF World Championship, 13-14 July. Trans-Tasman Libyan Contest, July 20. VK Remus Day Contest is August 17 and 18. The first three-month period of the Ted Powell Memorial Digs Challenge for 2019 has now closed. The objective of the challenge is to work the most wanted DXCC entities based on the ranking and club logs most wanted list, which is published on the contest website. All Australian amateurs are eligible to enter and entering is easy. You don't need to be a serious DXer. Get in for the second three minute window now on vk2au.org. Through the DX window, DF13 German Special Event. Look for special event stations with prefixes DF13 to be active until June 30, 2019. This to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the maiden flight of the Junkers F-13, the first all-metal built airplane. It was introduced to civil aviation and is a mother of all commercial aircraft. 
All QSOs will be automatically confirmed after July 15, 2019 with a QSL card via the Bureau. If you do not need a QSL card, let them know. Panama Special Event Look for the Special Event call sign H31A to be active until August 15 to commemorate the 500th anniversary of the foundation of Panama City. Activity will be on most HF bands using SSB and the digital modes, BRIDI, PSK31 and FT8. QSL manager is HP1 AVS. Anniversary of the Federal Republic of Germany. Look for special event stations DM70GER and DL70BRD. Now active until December 31, 2019 to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Federal Republic of Germany, which was established on May 23, 1949. Operations will be on CW and SSB. Celebrating its 50th anniversary, Sweden's National Society for the Active Visually Impaired is active as SF50CG throughout 2019. QSL via SM0BYD. Special call EI19RE active for 2019. The special call sign EI19RE will be active for the duration of 2019 to commemorate the establishment of the first Irish Parliament. It first met in January of 1919 following a landslide victory for the Irish Nationalists in December 1918. Scouting's Gilwell Park is being honoured throughout 2019 with GB100GP. In the world of DX, amateurs in Turkey are using the special call sign TC10GITRAD to mark the 10th anniversary of the radio group GITRAD. They are on the air all year through to December 31. No cards are required. However, if you need a paper QSL card, please mail yours directly to TA7AZC and include a stamped self addressed envelope and money for postage. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FUQ in Ingham. Across Australia from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. In VK5, it can be heard on 28515 at 0900 Central Standard Time. I'm Jeff, VK5 HEL. Let's have a look now at wireless weather and broadcasting, monitoring and shortwave news. Radio Caroline Easter. You can listen in to Radio Caroline North live from the radio ship Ross Revenge anchored in the estuary of the River Blackwater Easter Friday until Easter Monday. You'll be able to hear them on radiocaroline.co.uk and there's still a couple of days left to listen. Strong radio bursts from a sunspot AR2738. Massive sunspot AR2738 is sending bursts of radio energy towards Earth strong enough to make audible noises in the loudspeakers of common ham radio transceivers and shortwave radios. An amateur radio astronomer in New Mexico recorded some of the bursts last weekend and they sounded like ocean surf. Visit spaceweather.com to hear further sounds and find out how you can detect them in your own backyard. I'm John, VK4JJW, with the Q News Workbench, the Nuts and Bolts Report. Measure twice, cut once. Well, this is actually off the workbench and undergoing trials. Thanks to smart speakers, audio documentaries are about to evolve to the next level. Newspapers are rapidly moving into the audio documentary space previously dominated by radio. At a session on smart speakers and podcasts at Radio Days Europe, Steve Ahern, reporting for radioinfo.com.au, heard from major British newspapers who showcased their audio offerings and was blown away by the experience. There were good, simple ideas such as the Guardian's Voice Lab offering, a sports quiz for smart speakers based on the year's sports news. Included in the quiz are replays of audio grabs that were used in the original reports. The Financial Times has been producing audio content for 10 years as part of its transition from print to digital. And what excites FT is that there's a large listenership for their audio and that many of those listeners are young people who they may not have reached by their traditional text-based outputs. The FT is focusing on three areas of interest. Lean back and listen audio content, engagement with native commercial content, Interactive audio, Q&As and interactive documentaries. 
The FT's Hidden Cities is an entirely new form of storytelling, according to the FT's Alastair Mackey. You can try it too here on the link in this week's news, but it's best experienced on your smart speaker. Now, once you've listened, imagine how this interactive documentary is put together. It's not a linear experience, although the whole 90 minutes can be listened to in one go if you want. It's recorded in segments, then a series of interactive logic steps is overlaid on the audio segments. Then a range of interactive questions are planned, which trigger different audio segments as requested. There are also questions and jokes to interact with the listener. After the audio was recorded and edited... There must have been a lot more additional work done to overlay the interactive elements. It's a very impressive piece of work. I'm John VK4JJW. This is VK1WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions. www.wia.org.au From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hello, I'm Cole, VK3GTV, with this week's Worldwide Special Interest Group News. First up, ATV, Artistic Slow Scan TV from Iceland. Until the 29th of April, as part of an art installation in Iceland by Lucy Helton, KD2MFV, SSTV images will be transmitted by TF3JA. The images are of Icelandic glaciers photographed many years ago. Look out for USB signals on 14 to 30 MHz at 1300, 1800 and 2300 UTC. Amateur radio operators who receive these transmissions are being asked to print out the images received and post them back using instructions contained in the WIA text edition of this broadcast. The 2019 AGM of the South African Radio League, held on April 13, was live-streamed on YouTube. SARL News reports, The SARL Unlocking Amateur Radio Technology Symposium took place in Stellenbosch and was attended by 60 people. The presentations were well-received and a lot of interesting discussion took place. During the afternoon, VHF, UHF and SOTA meetings were held. And you can watch the SARL 2019 AGM via the link in this week's text edition, best read at wya.org.au. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Females in Radio. International Girls Event has role for amateur radio. April 25th marks International Girls Day in Information and Communications Technology. Private companies, non-profit organisations and even big businesses around the world are getting involved. The event is backed by the membership of the International Telecommunication Union and it provides girls and young women with a window into the tech world with the hopes of sparking interest in studies and an eventual career. And yes, ham radio is getting into the act too. Listen with extra attention for the voices of young girls on the air from 9am to 3pm local time from the offices of A1 Austria Telecom in Vienna. The girls will be assisted by employees of the company at the Workers' Ham Radio Station and will be calling QRZ on both HF and Echolink. According to the ITU website, since the program began, more than 350,000 girls and young women have participated in International Girls in ICT Day in 171 countries worldwide. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. Australian CubeSat to use 76 gigahertz. The IARU Satellite Coordination Panel has announced the amateur radio frequencies for the Australian 76 gigahertz CubeSat CUAVA-1 that is expected to launch in July 2019 from Japan into a 400km orbit. CUAVA-1 is a 3U CubeSat that will link with the international radio amateur community for outreach, training and increased data downloads, observe the Earth with a novel multi-spectral imager, use a GPS instrument to explore radio oculation, and the reception of GPS signals scattered off the Earth, as well as provide a backup determination of the CubeSat location, investigate plasma environment and associated space weather with radiation detectors, and explore the performance of a new communications payload. These frequencies have been coordinated by the IARU, downlinks 437-075 MHz, 
2404 MHz, 5840 MHz, and 76.8 GHz. Uplinks 145, 875 MHz, 2404 MHz, and 5660 MHz. Worldwide Special Interest Group's FT8. It's great, mate. FT8 Performance Secrets Video. Neil Smith, G4DBN, investigates what really matters when you're aiming for the ultimate performance with FT8 and other digital modes. Neil demonstrates and explains the most common problems which affect the receive and transmit paths on analog and SDR systems. Using real-world examples of each of the pitfalls, Neil presents practical tools and techniques to help you improve your Digimode performance from LF to microwaves. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Internet, the HAMS Domain. France, connection of amateur stations to the Internet. The REF site has published a brief update on progress of decree regarding the conditions under which radio installations in the amateur services can connect to a network open to the public. The network of French publishers were recently consulted by the Higher Commission of Digital and Post Offices for the publication of the decree relating to amateur services and networks open to the public. The proposals were taken up by the Commission, whose full text of the opinion is at the link in the text edition of this broadcast. Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA OC059. Haru JA1XGI will be active as V6K from Kosrae Island sometime later this year. Activity will be on 40, 30, 20, 15 and 10 metres using mainly CW and sometimes FT8. QSL via JA1XGT. OC133. SATI JE1JKL will be active as 9M6NA from Mohammed's 9M6MO's QDH on the Boon Island, East Malaysia between May 23rd and 28th. His focus will be on 6 metres FT8 and all logs will be promptly uploaded to the LOTW. OC207 and OC128, both de-expeditions to these islands are now cancelled due to some unforeseen circumstances. And OC-235, operators Audi, DU-1ZDR and Gazelle, DU-1ZDQ, will be active as DZ-1A from Patrick's on the Beach, Siagayo Island, between May 4th and 5th. Activity will be on specifically IOTA frequencies 14260 and 7055 kHz using CW and SSB. Well, I hope you're enjoying the Easter break and not pigging out too much on those chocolate treats. I'm Cole, VK3GTV, and I'll catch you next week with more Worldwide Special Interest Group news. Socially speaking, of course, it is Easter this weekend, but left to come on the 2019 social scene in VK3 Moorabbin District Radio Club's Hamfest, that's Saturday, May 11, the 2019 WIA Annual Conference in Sydney, the weekend of May 24 and 26, in VK2, the Oxley Region Amateur Radio Club's Field Day, June 8 and 9. VK5 sees the South East Radio Group's 2019 annual convention and, of course, it's also the annual Australian Fox Hunting Championships, June 8-9. to Gips Tech, that's in VK3, Gips Tech 2019, happens 13-14 of July. In VK4, the Townsville Amateur Radio Club's card will gathering four whole days, commencing October 4. VK3, two events left in this year, Yarra Valley Amateur Radio Group's Hamfest, October 13, and the Ballarat Amateur Radio Group's Barg Hamvention, October 27. So now, until next we meet, I'm Graham, VK4 Baker Baker. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been VK1 WIA and the weekly WIA Amateur Radio News Service. On RF, we thank our rebroadcast team and you for listening. And remember, internet streaming and text of this news is available 24-7 at wia.org.au. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts boven aan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.a0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl.
whoever hears this is crazy. En microfoon naar retour.